when we were discussing with Dr. Camila how to talk about your seminar, sir, I told Sir Camila, if you agree, sir, let's start first with basics, concepts before the strategies. Maybe sometime in the future, next semester, would be strategies on how to uh, add little things to make our classes more IFL oriented. But it was in their classes that, you know, the Bible comes to life. I had a Bible teacher, uh, several of them also, when I was in high school, that taught us Bible doctrines. Uh, Sir Desmond was very young then. Very young when he was my Bible teacher. I think he was duly married that time with the uh, mom. He was just from Mountain View. That I can be came in my ESA. That was a long time ago in Bethlehem. What I'm trying to share to you, friends, is this. These people made impressions to me. I'm making a Sabbath school discovery. Okay? Why? Because when we look at IFL, to me, IFL is not simply tricks and strategies. But it's more than that, and I'll tell you more of that in the second or the third series. I mean, when we go IFL, there will be some tools of the trade, correct? In short, this is now, uh, if this is a research presentation, this is actually uh, the review of related literature, okay? But I, will, I won't call it like that. Tools of the trade. Now, please excuse me for showing to you some books that I'd like to highlight that can help you. Okay? Because to me, it has helped me. Number one is the Bible. As Christian teachers, the Bible should be supreme in the thought mind frame of each of us. The Bible should be foremost. Concepts is tested through the Bible. Now you might say, how do we go the theory of all of this when you use the Bible? Uh, there are things that are measured to the Bible, but my point is it's not it's not simply a science book, but it is a test of theories and worldviews. It should be the basis. There are many theories that you will hear, but the scripture should be the test of all. So, I make no apologies when they say that learning, especially the sciences, should be taught from a faith-based concept. And that is important. Since we're some of the advocates, what needs to shape our thinking of education? You know, as I said last night, we don't have a clear statement of belief on education. But when you read books written by Sister Y, especially the book Education, the book, the book Education will help all of us to unpack what is Adventist education? There's a class being taught before which is called the philosophy of Adventist education. And I remember one of the readings that we read are gleanings from the work of Ruben Madalaisai. I don't know whether you've read those books, but I remember those things. So Dr. Matt, as we call him, was the first you know, uh, influential leader of the church, uh, Dr. Goda also, as way we should say. But these things are important. And there's an intriguing reading that I've read, uh, quite not very recent. And it's an important book, or should I say, reading from the Adventist Review. It was written uh, more than 10 years ago. Are we being Adventist education? This is very interesting. It's a good read. This reading 
was actually based from the book that Shane wrote. Shane Anderson said in his uh, bigger chunk of his book, which is How to Kill Adults Education and Give It a Fighting Chance. One of the things he said there, if you want to kill adults education to those teachers who are not Christian, if you simply have a teacher in Adventist school system that are not committed to the scripture, that are not committed to God, then you're killing Adventist education. Now that's, that is something. Why I am saying this? These are interesting reads. Now, as I've said, 